before going overseas, we focus a lot on the cost of flights. You could fly via Crimea? Cheaper. Syria? Cheaper. With Jetstar via the Korean demilitarized zone? <laughs> I am not flying Jetstar. But we don't pay as much attention to the cost of getting foreign currency. Carrying cash is handy, <sighs> but keeping it secure can be inconvenient, which is why most Australians travel with plastic instead. But it might be our cards that are really ripping us off. Uh, you're my tie. Thank you. Credit and debit cards are convenient, but you pay for this convenience, usually with an international transaction fee of about 3%. It's a bit like going on holidays with your bank, a foreign bank, and your card payment processor. And every time you buy something, they all get a cut. And that's why they call it a Mai Tai. <laughs> There's also travel cards, which you can preload with foreign currency before your trip. They're touted as a way to avoid international transaction fees. But are they really cheaper? Let's have a look at how they work. If you use a credit card overseas, Visa, MasterCard or American Express exchange your currency each time you buy something or get cash out. With a travel card, you make one big currency exchange with your bank before you leave. And this is where travel cards can trick you. It's easy to focus on the low transaction fees and ignore the exchange rate. The exchange rates travel cards offer are on average between 4 and 5% worse than standard credit or debit card rates. Your tiny apples? And that could cost you far more than what you saved on your cheap flight. Getting a 5% better exchange rate with a credit or debit card is a good thing. But before you rush off and get 5% more drunk and buy 5% more counterfeit DVDs while wearing 5% more Bintang singlets, remember there's generally that 3% international transaction fee too. So in principle, travel cards are only about 2% worse than credit and debit cards. But then there's the flat fees. Most travel cards charge between $2 and $4 for ATM withdrawals, whereas most credit and debit cards charge between $4 and $5. But travel cards can charge fees for buying the card, closing the card account, and changing currencies on the card. And unless you know the exact amount of money you're going to spend on your holiday... I do. You might be charged a fee for topping up your card or getting the money back that you didn't spend on your holiday. So is that all clear? Plus, if you run out of money, it can take two Australian business days to load more on the card. Which could be useful in some circumstances, but not in most. But if you've been stung by travel cards, you aren't alone. Just ask this woman, who asked to remain anonymous. I got an ab travel card when I went to South America thinking it would be cheaper. But by the time I'd paid for all the currency conversion and fees, it ended up costing me a fortune. Hey, hey, I thought we said this would be anonymous. Yeah, great, big help. Or this guy, who also happens to be... I was also misled by NAB. They told me I could avoid all international transaction fees by using their traveller card. Turns out there was a 6.5% foreign exchange rate charge. But unlike our anonymous person... Oh, come on, guys, seriously. Oh, sorry, sorry. Are you Kirsten Drysdale from the checkout? I contacted NAB, but after about 10 emails and two or three phone calls, eventually they agreed they'd misled me. They offered me $750, which I accepted. The cheapest way to travel is with a low-fee debit card, like this one. It offers the superior exchange rate of credit and debit cards without any of the international transaction or ATM fees. Or if you prefer a credit card, these offer no transaction fees for purchases. They can be expensive for cash withdrawals. And if you do use credit cards, pay them off fully and on time, so your savings aren't eaten up by extra interest charges. That way you can enjoy the cheapest possible holiday without any of the... BULL!